Well, thank you everybody for coming. It's a, it's a great day. Not only, not only is it homecoming uh, and a great uh, festivities and activity going on on campus, uh, but today we get to show you the kind of the culmination of a year of planning uh, from our strategic plan to our uh, facilities master plan. Um, I wanna make sure everybody knows this is a, it's a 20 year look at, uh, at our facilities here at Montana State on the athletic side and, and where we can go with, with our facilities and what we think we need to do in order to maintain our success and, and be more successful. Uh, this plan sets the vision uh, for Montana State Athletics and it was from the help and support of our, our great president, Wadid Cruzado, um, that really helped kick this, uh, kick this plan off and, and really her, her support is 100% behind this, the, behind this plan. She sees this as the vision for the south part, part of campus and the vision for Bobcat Athletics moving forward. Before I move forward, I want to just thank a few people, um, some people that helped us get to where we are today. Um, a &E Architects, uh, Dusty Eaton and Brad Dahl, Crawford Architects, David Murphy and James Pastine, um, our MSU Facilities and Services staff, especially Walt Banzinger and Randy Stevens, uh, our MSU Alumni Foundation and Chris Murray, uh, Sports Facilities with Dwayne Morris, uh, our athletic staff, Dan, especially Dan Davies, and all of our MSU coaches and staff. This was our, our committee that we put together uh, to look at our, to take a, a look at our facilities and, and really put this plan together. Uh, the process, I want to just update you kind of on the process. As you know, a couple months ago, we released our strategic plan. And from that strategic plan, we identified seven uh, strategic themes that are important to our growth. And it's important to know that that strategic plan is our operation. It, it's our vision for our athletic department, our internal operations of how we are going to get to where we're going to go. We have a lot of goals from all of our sport programs to our administration, uh, the things that we need to accomplish. And that strategic plan sets our goals and our, and our strategies on how we're going to achieve that. Within that plan, our number one theme is taking care of our student athletes, um, giving them the resources and the support for them to be successful. And part of that, obviously, is facilities. And during that process, we sent out an RFP, went through the whole procurement process, uh, a and &E Architects, uh, with the partnership of Crawford, uh, won that bid, and we started right away on, on a review of our current facilities and where we want to go uh, and what our thoughts are, what we need to be successful. And, uh, you know, part of, part of that uh, strategic plan was, was just championship facilities. How can we get to where we need to go to be able to accomplish our goals? Um, the committee did an unbelievable amount of work. Uh, I thank them for it every day. Uh, but we sat with coaches, student athletes, uh, campus administrators, uh, anybody that we could to, to really get a good vision and, 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 and a good review of where we are and where we want to take this. Um, but now is the time. Now is the time to showcase that plan, showcase that plan to you, but also showcase the plan to all of our constituent, constituents, our, our boosters, our alumni, our fans and friends that, that we want to help us. And our, our great friend, Sonny Holland, obviously his great quote is, now is the time and this is the place. And we really, truly, firmly believe that. Um, some of you may ask why. Why is this important and why are we doing this today? Um, this plan is all about our student athlete success. Um, if you look at it, our job as an athletic department is to recruit the best student athletes that we possibly can and develop them as students and develop them as athletes. We need to provide the resources and the support for them to become champions not only in the classroom but champions on the field of competition. And through their four or five years, we need to provide the resources for them to be able to do that. Facilities obviously are a glowing part of, of what everybody sees. Um, they're, they're most definitely going to help us recruit, uh, but we also need to, to make sure that they help us uh, in the support of those student athletes while they're here and we can develop them as they go. Uh, and simply put, if, many of you have been into the Brick Breeding Fieldhouse. We've simply outgrown it. We need more space and we need more space to properly train our student athletes. We need to give them the space to be able to, um, to visit with a tutor, to sit with an academic advisor, to do their homework, to get some things done. We've just simply run out of space. We do a great job of scheduling our buildings, but it's time to now expand on, on those resources. And the reason for a plan, there's just a lot of moving parts. We're combining current facilities uh, with new facilities, and there's going to be a lot of domino effects. And, and when something happens, we got to be ready to go with how we're going to fill that space, the, the space that is vacated. And this plan addresses everything. It, 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 affects, it uh, addresses those, that domino effect, um, but also affects um, how we're going to be able to construct new and, and renovate the, the current facilities to be able to meet those. Um, I'm sure timeline is on everybody's mind as well. And, and to be straightforward, uh, we're starting. I mean, we're, we're, we're going right now. And uh, fundraising will start. 
this is the start of it. This is an opportunity for us to get this plan out in front of all of our, our friends and, and alumni and boosters. And uh, it's, it's an opportunity for us to, to get it in their hands and then we can have those conversations. Uh, people will talk about construction and things like that. And to be honest, once we have the funding and once we have all the proper approvals, we're gonna get going. So really the, back seat, the, the work starts now. I mean, we've done all the, um, the thing, the concepts and the work to get everything on paper. And now it's our job to go out and start meeting with people and, and really developing our, 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 uh, our campaign committee. We're lucky enough to have uh, Coach Dennis Erickson with us, who is an M MSU alum. He is going to be helping us in this process. Um, I think it's great because Coach Erickson has been, uh, been involved in a lot of different places and he's had a lot of success. Um, and he has seen firsthand what athletic facilities can do for an athletic, to pro athletic program, but also a university. And obviously I have Coach Choate sitting up here with me, but I also have some coaches here in the back. Um, our coaches are dedicated to our student athlete success. And not only is this some of these plans will they help football, they're going to help all of our sport programs and they're going to help all of our student athletes hopefully be able to accomplish their, their dreams and goals. So with that, I guess I'll, I'll open up for questions. Unless you want to, unless you have a statement. I'm good. All right. I'm good. Let's get a shovel on the ground. <laughs> so Leon, what is the, what comes first out of the renderings that we yep. saw today? Well, you'll see um, there, there, there is a project one and project one is all about um, developing our student athletes. And we talked about space and we talked about developing student athletes. So our goal is to move uh, our football program out of uh, Brick Breeden Field House over to the stadium. Uh, you know, they, they go through a lot on a given day. They, their, their locker room is over in the field house. They walk to the stadium every single day. Um, but we have 350 student athletes that are um, in the field house. And that, when I say we run out of space, we've just run out of space. And so by moving them here, giving them ample opportunity to do what they need to do on a daily basis, will open up a lot of space in the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse for all of our other student athletes. And so it'll open up athletic training space, it'll open up weight room space, it'll open up academic space. But one of the most important things about this is when we do move football over here, their offices in this plan become a new academic center. And that academic center, center increases by more than five times what we currently have. It gives us opportunity to do some individual tutoring, uh, some group tutoring, some group studies, uh, gives them just gives them space to spread out. And uh, you know, right now we do a great job in the classroom. Uh, our cumulative GPA is at 3.18, uh, but this gives us an opportunity to do better because we'll be able to identify and work with many more student athletes. I would say, you know, we're just behind. And I think if you ask all of our coaches, um, we're behind in our facilities and we have a lot of priorities. Uh, but I think the first, first thing we must do is create some more space for our student athletes and be able to develop them first. We're, we're gonna talk to everybody about their interests uh, we're going to sit down and have those conversations, and if things develop out of that, that's great. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we have this plan, because we know we have a lot of projects that we need to complete, um, and hopefully something strikes with somebody and they want to sit down and have conversations with us. What is the time goal? Do you have those? As soon as possible. As Coach said, you know, get a shovel in the ground. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be out there. Uh, we're going to be out uh, meeting with people. We've already started. You know, we, we've made trips and we're talking with people when they come to campus. Uh, homecoming is a great time because we have a lot of alums and, and donors that come back to campus. Uh, we've heard from a lot of people uh, that are interested in this. And this was, you know, kind of our step one to really get it out there. We have, Montana is a huge state. Uh, we have a lot of, of alumni that are all over the country. But this is an opportunity for us to show them, okay, this is what we're talking about. Now let's have a conversation. How would you guys describe say, the level of ambition here? Is this a big, hairy, audacious goal type of thing, or do you feel like it's something that's really attainable? Yeah, I mean, I, when you look at it, if you look at it as you're trying to get it done in a, in a year, yes, it's huge. But if you look at it over a 20 year span, I don't think it is. It gives us time to really focus on some of those key areas that we, we need to focus on. Um, and that's, again, what through our conversations with our coaches and our staff and our student athletes, um, it was creating that space for them, for everybody to be more successful. And we, we believe that this first project does that. How much does it all cost? We are, obviously we're still working on the cost for the entire project. The, uh, the first initial project is slated for 16 million. And that includes the, uh, the facility that would be housed here at the uh, stadium and the academic renovations over in the field house. Jeff, what impacts do you see for football here? Well, I, I don't think it's just a football project. I mean, certainly we're going to benefit from it, but there's 14.7 million reasons on the other side of the mountains why we need to do this. Uh, we talk about being the premier university in the state of Montana, and I believe that we are. I believe that we've made that investment on the academic side without question. 
um, whether it's student services, new dorms, new food services, outstanding um, lab space for, for our, our engineering students. Our student athletes all deserve that first class experience as well. And uh, you know, as Leon mentioned, we're talking about a facility that was finalized in 1958 and we've done renovations to it, but uh, by the same token, we, we certainly need, there, there's, there's, there's technological updates in terms of how we train our student athletes so that, that we're, we couldn't probably do in a cost-effective way by renovating the existing space. And so part of, the, part of the project that I think is so appealing is that we are gonna maximize our existing space by allowing football 104 athletes and 20 support staff to get out of there, provide a satellite weight room, a satellite training room, um, you know, our locker room is the biggest locker room. If you go into our Olympic sports locker room and see they're all, their lockers are about this thin and they're all stacked on top of one another, wouldn't it be cool if we could allow them to have, you know, more space? And that's, a, that's, that's the domino effect that's created by starting with this project. And I just feel like it's a, it's a, it's a win-win for all the student athletes at, at Montana State. I, I know the coaching staff in general, um, and, and in particular our, our, uh, our, our Olympic sports, are going to really appreciate us being gone. We've done something already that I think they appreciate. We practice in the mornings. You know, we're out. You want to come see us practice? You got to get up early, and we're usually off the field by 9:30 in the morning. Well, that opens up all kinds of space for all of our other student athletes. Well, if that's what's best for our kids, we're going to do that. But I'm a team player, and and I, I believe that that this is the project that creates the greatest good for all of our student athletes, and in football in particular, recruiting is big. Facilities are big. We already have a tremendous fan base. We already have a, a, a tremendous community and a great university to recruit to. That's the cherry on top. You know, now we've got something that, hey, yeah, we also, by the way, have the best football operations building in the big sky. So for us to be able to get the best and brightest, we've got to have facilities that are on par or better than our competitors. How much input do you get from the student athletes, and in your case with football, and you're out recruiting and you're trying to sell this place, what do you athletes are here and then when you're looking at facilities? Well, I think what we recruit to are our strengths, obviously. So there's a lifestyle piece here in the Gallatin Valley. There's a tremendous world-class university. Uh, we have a lot of uh, young women and, and young men that are interested in engineering, our business school, etc. cetera. Um, talked about the lifestyle in terms of the outdoor lifestyle, but we recruit to our game day atmosphere. That's probably our number one recruiting tool. And I think if you haven't had an opportunity to see a, a home Bobcat football game, tomorrow's a great time. Uh, although it's sold out, you know, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable atmosphere, and I think it's one of the best in the big sky. It's one of the best in the country at any level, really. And so it's, uh, it's something that we, we recruit to for sure. But we don't take them to the academic center because that's not going to be, you know, that's not going to be the prize that we want to show them, you know. And, and, and that's something that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to take recruits and their families and say, here's where your son or daughter is going to be able to really focus in on their academics. If your son or daughter's injured, look at this state-of-the-art training facility that we have to take care of them. Um, when you're talking to parents, a lot of times those are the things that they're really interested in. Uh, the kids always want to talk about playing time and, and, uh, and gear and, and all that kind of stuff, but the, the parents want to know what's gonna, what, how, are their, how are their children going to be cared for outside of the game. And those facilities, well, they, on the external side of it, it looks like it's a building and that's what you're showing. It's the bells and whistles. Really, it's the inside. That's the guts of the athletic department. That's where a lot of the, the heavy lifting is done in terms of the academic support. The environment they're in in academic support needs to be on par with the environment they're in in the academic side of campus. We would all want our children to have the best of the best for medical treatment, right? Well, you know, we'd like them to have hydrotherapy tools and we'd like them to have the, the latest and, and the best uh, equipment available. That's part of this project is to make sure that our support services are on par with anybody in the country. So Leon, if this is stage, you know, priority one, renovating, recruiting, and moving stuff here, what is two, or is that, or is that just where the money is? Yep. So that that's developed by our conversations and, and our, our ability to fundraise for certain projects. Okay. Yep. Um, can we go through some of the some of the other things? What do you mean by another release that for Worthington Arena of more fully enclosed seating bowl? Can you explain some of the other things you want to do with Worthington and for Green? Yeah. So you know when you look at the plan, obviously. Um, the, the domino effect is moving people out and having more space. Well, part of that is, you, you mentioned before the indoor facility. Well, if we can move track from Brick Breeden to an indoor facility, that opens up all the space um, for, 
for our arena uh, sports and how we um, configure uh, Worthington Arena and, and Brick Breed and Fieldhouse. And so we could really do some some neat things with the stands and, and make it more intimate for, for basketball games, for rodeo, for any, any event that we wanted to have in there, for concerts, uh, anything. But we also could create some, uh, uh, some hospitality space, which we don't have in there right now. So looking at suites and looking at different things where we can uh, maybe do a kind of a, you know, a second level where, where we can have uh, some hospitality, just like we have over here. You know, if Coach Schoet mentioned the uh, football game day environment. Well, we can have that same thing over um, in Brick Breeding Fieldhouse in, during the winter. Uh, we just got to have the space to be able to do it. So that's that domino effect that we talked about having to move things out before we can really attack some of those things. Right, so new indoor facility would be that would be kind of the precursor to be able to do some of those things correct yeah, yep gotcha. so yep. the so brick brain is still going to be a multi-purpose you know you can still move the stands for sure there. yeah that, that'll never go away yeah okay. yep gotcha. and with with tennis what was kind of the inspiration with with expanding the indoor tennis, tennis? Facility? Yeah. yeah um well with with the construction that we have on campus uh we have eight outdoor courts right now we are going to lose two of those courts uh, with the completion of the Norm S. Bjornsson Hall and with the parking garage. So we'll lose two of those. Uh, we have four indoor courts right now. We want to get to six. One, so we can host uh, Big Sky Conference championships. Uh, the other is, um, you know, that's that space we use externally. And, and people pay memberships in there. They pay for court time. There are lessons. And so the more space we have in there, the more we can do. And the more people can get in there and play. And so, one, it was driven by, obviously, for us as an athletic department, uh, being able to host more events in there and if you go to a tennis match uh, you know that starts off there's four courts you have three doubles matches well only four of the singles matches can get on the court at one time well if you have six all six would be playing at the same time plus then we can have uh, all of the other people that from the community that go in and play there's more time for them to be able to get on the courts yeah well, i brought that up my next question is the community being able to use some of this stuff i know they the high school already used the indoor yep. um, facility for you know districts and things like that yep. Is there going to be any opportunity to use that awesome new indoor? Our goal, yeah, you know, th that facility will be like nothing else in, in the Galton Valley. And our goal is to reach out to campus and to reach out to the community and, and of course, partner with them. Uh, obviously, we have a great youth soccer program. We've got great clubs that are here on campus. Um, there are going to be times throughout the day that we want that facility to be used at all times. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be practicing in there, especially a lot during the spring when, it, when the weather is not so, so good. Track will be in there, football will be in there. A lot of our training will, will take place in there. But there are certainly going to be some down times, and we want to be able to fill that with, with whatever it is. And so we will definitely be having those conversations. This university as a whole seems to be riding a real wave of momentum. And I just wonder what kind of impact that you might be sensing within the athletic department when you're out talking to people and you're trying to do what you're trying to do here. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you from my perspective is ever since I've, I've gotten here, um, we've had the great support from President Cruzado, and she's done an unbelievable job um, with everything that she's done at this university. But it's really, uh, for us, it's been like, so what's next? When's athletics, when, when's the athletics turn? And, uh, and I think that's what Coach Cho and I have been talking about. It, now is the time. You know, it is right now. Uh, we've seen great growth on campus with enrollment and facilities, and, you know, our, our students on campus, uh, you know, have, have great opportunities. We want those same opportunities here for, for our student athletes. And uh, again, you know, now is the time. I think the excitement is there, um, the excitement of, of everything that's going on within our department. We've had some great success uh, here this past you know, couple of years, and we want to be able to continue that. Well, in our conversations, this is how we continue that. This is how we're able to, to continue to recruit the best student athletes that we possibly can. This is how we're able to continue to train them to be the best. Uh, but we need to get these things done. Well, as we've talked about the growth of campus, and, and you see where student athletes and faculty and staff park, um, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of traffic going from the south part of campus to the north. And really, that, the promenade is to connect that, um, to make, give it a more co collegial feel. And uh, our architects came up with this great concept called the M to M concept. And really, what that does, it connects everything that we're doing here on campus with the community and vice versa, connecting the community with campus. But we're also doing that internally on campus and really getting. Uh, people, the flow of campus from the central part of campus to the south part of campus, and then at the beginning and the end of days, trying to get the, the campus to, to, you know, back to their car, to their parking lots. So we want that to be a, a natural kind of uh, traffic flow, if you will. We want it, we want it to be full of people uh, all days, uh, and especially on game days. And I think it'll create, you know, it's an opportunity to really create some new traditions, uh, expand on some of our current traditions, but really expand on some new ones as well. Where'd you come up with the 20 years? Uh, that's kind of generally what, what, what master plans are. Um, 
uh, and, and if, when you look at it, hey, there, there's some big projects on there. You know, it's gonna, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, um, but uh, generally, that's that's kind of the framework that master plans follow. Do you have in your mind what you would like to be celebrating in, in five years from now? A lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely like to see some facilities done, completed, um, for sure started. Uh, you know, I think. Um, and that's our goal. Uh, our goal is to is to get to work right now, um, knock on doors, make phone calls, beat the pavement, and um, you know all the conversations that we've had. People are genuinely excited about where where the university is going, where the athletic department is going, and they're excited about what's next. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we we like to move as quickly as we possibly can. But I think in five years, I would love to. Uh, will it happen? Well, we'll see. Um, it, it'll depend on a lot of those conversations. I just noticed that you. Yeah. I know Kagi and Kagi in general is one of those choking points for a lot of locals. In yeah, town. yeah. Do you guys want to help out financially with maybe road improvements, especially around campus? Yeah, that's a university conversation. I, I think when we look when we look at the master plan, we had to take everything into consideration, and so, you know, if we you know where the indoor is located on the master plan, uh, or even the expansion of this facility here, uh, we had to take a KG expansion into consideration and that's where the architects came into play and in working uh, and working with them and we also combine that with our our university master plan you know because they have a, a facility master plan for uh, you know I think it's 15 or 20 year plan as well because they expect the university to continue to expand and so we had all those conversations because we don't want to build a facility and then in five years be tripping on ourselves because we didn't take something into consideration so we talked a lot about those we talked about parking we talked about traffic flow um, and so we're, those those conversations will continue as we start to continue to develop these plans. Anything else? What about the uh, the uh, stadium behind you? Um, additional seating. How important is it to add more seats, especially, especially renovate the uh, east side bleachers? You know, the stadium obviously is a priority. Uh, the east side is uh, is definitely a priority for us. Um, that's the only structure in the stadium currently that's original to the stadium. Um, and so we know we need to address that. That's uh, obviously a priority in our, in our plan. Um, you know, we're, we're selling out, you know, and that, that's a great thing. And, um, you know, we, we are continually uh, monitoring uh, our ticket sales and, and the need for whether or not we need to expand. Um, and all those things will be taken into consideration. If, when you look at the plan, we, we do have a space where we can add seats if we, if we need to. Um, but I think there, there would be a small amount of an increase it, um, when we do renovate the east side. Um, but that's something that we always are watching. Um, you know, we hope, obviously, as we do some of these projects, we continue to get great student athletes, we continue to win uh, on the field, that's gonna create more demand for our seats. And, and as that kind of all plays out, we're gonna continue to monitor that and, uh, and see what we need to do. That's always in consideration. Well, you know, sometimes college athletics must feel like an arms race. <laughs> and I just wonder if you, this plan that you've laid out, is, is it something that, Ten years, if things are going the way you want to, you still think you're ahead of the curve, or you're, you're where you want to be, or you know, how much concern is it? Well, we, we've done what we wanted to do in the ten years. Everybody else has made more advances too. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I understand. I, I think right now we feel like we have to catch up a little bit. Uh, we've done a good job with the facilities that we have. We've done a great job with the facilities that we have. Um, but there is a little bit, yeah, we, we definitely do need to catch up. I, I, I never want to really consider it an arms race. Um, I want, what I want to do at the end of the day is look at our student athletes and say, we're providing you with the best possible resources and support for you to be successful. And if we, if we can do that and we can look at ourselves in the, um, in the mirror and but we can have a conversation with our student athletes and if they truly believe that, then I think we're doing the right things. So I think it really all comes down to that. Um, you know, I, I never want to just build something because somebody else is build some, building something. There's got to be a purpose behind it. And that's the reason why we generate this plan is, uh, yeah, we do have priorities. What, what is the first priority? Well, it's going to depend on what people want to get excited about, but really then what our student-athletes, can what's going to help them develop. Yeah. 